I tried to convince him, and that's a good story for the listeners out there to go all in. He had an investment banking job, which is great pay. And I know, especially when you go to schools like Wash U, uh, Penn, or Lawyer, you know, we both went, there's a lot of pressure on you to get the highest paying job possible and go on that path. And so he ended up going to New York and HSBC. And so I had to start from scratch, come out to LA and start a new business. But he was so much fun to build with. But why don't we even talk about that, that pressure to have a consulting or banking job? But you didn't do that. You started it. You started the moves in college. This is basically a better, more original version of Snapchat maps, but then you had to go against such a huge conglomerate like them, but you did not fall for the, I need to go where it's an investment came. Were you just always original thinker? Yeah. Um, I mean, definitely. I feel like in my entire life with sports, I feel like I competed at the highest level. So just like the level of ambition was always there. Um, but I feel like I also had just like some really fortuitous events happen early in life. So sophomore year, uh, started a business with. A really close friend of mine named Hannah Pearl, uh, an events business that's still going uh, on Wash U's oh, campus. Oh, nice. Let's go. And so it's like my first entrepreneurial experience went super well. And I was in school. So like the level of risk was really low. And it's like once you have a win, like your level of confidence is so much higher. And so I remember like our first year, I was thinking about going to be an attorney. And we made more money than like what I would have made an attorney salary. And I'm still in school. And so I'm like, you know what? It's amazing. There's something here that like I really need to lean into. So. Yeah. Well, and I forgot to, I glossed over your athletic background, which I think is so cool as well. You use basketball as a tool to get into Wash U. I always talk about with my, uh, all my listeners, like without baseball, I would have never got to go play at Penn. And I'm really lucky that I got to use that experience. Did you know going into high school, like, hey, I'm going to just go to the best academic school possible. How did you maneuver that? Because Wash U is a really hard school to get into. Old school business for everyone out there, consistently ranked top five, even some years number one in the country. Yeah. So I think a couple of things, again, you know, talk about playing at the highest level. And so, you know, played against guys like Julius Randle, Kelly, oh, Oubre, wow. right? Like yeah. NBA players. So I knew in ninth grade, I was not that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, you just start thinking about like next steps and like, you know, I had some D1 offers, but the academic profile of the schools was nothing close to Wash U. And so, you know, once I found out just like what that institution had to offer, you know, I'm like, this is a really a no brainer. Like, I can still do the thing that I like, you know, in terms of playing basketball, but like, I'm actually setting myself up for the adult life that I'm going to. So. Well, a million percent, the better way to look at it. I know with my brother who also went to Wash U, uh, he only played a semester, shout out Daniel, but he played baseball and baseball got him in the school as super, uh, you know, intellectual kid. He had offers opportunities from Toledo and Ball State. And I had mentioned to him like, Hey, I just went through the whole, I went to junior college. I went all over the place and was lucky enough to land a pen. Hey, use baseball as the best tool to get into a great school and develop those skill sets. And so you did that at Wash U, and now you're going back and speaking at Wash U graduations. Like, what's that like from a humility standpoint to go back and be able to impact the students in the school that really made you who you are? Yeah, um, that was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. Um, you know, it's like all the MBAs, you know, for the most part are like a little bit further along and just years lived, yeah. you know, than I am, uh, you know, while I'm, I'm sharing with them. But I think also it's like a testament to, I would have never gotten that opportunity, you know, had I gone down the consulting, banking, like PE path. Um, and that's not a knock on that path, but I think you're able to have like some of these just like incredible moments, like when you take risks. Um, and so it's like that never huge. would have happened. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about that. You basically, and uh, you're in your late twenties. We don't have to be descriptive because this plus we want this podcast to live on for years upon years. So Chandler is guy in late twenties, super talented, but you right out of school or even not even right out of school in school, we're doing entrepreneurship. So you started getting the career experience of like four or five years worth in one year. And I oftentimes say entrepreneurship can be 10 years of experience in one. And so meanwhile, even though you're in your late twenties in a careers person, uh, sense you've lived so much longer than these MBA students, hence why they value your opinion. 